Hey everyone! In our last video, we discussed about the diodes, those tiny semiconductor devices that allow current to flow in one direction. But today, we're taking things a step further into the rectifier. A rectifier, or commonly known as AC to DC converter, is an electrical device often built using diodes as primary components. It functions to convert the two way flow alternating currents into a one way steady flow of direct current. But you might ask, why do we need to convert AC to DC? Well, in fact, most of the electronic gadgets or extra low voltage equipment such as CCTV camera, card access system, remote control, USB powered device, and various other equipment require DC supply to function. Yet, electricity is usually generated and distributed in the form of AC. So, if you've ever wondered why your laptop charger or your smartphone adapter has a little black box with a mysterious circuit inside, that's where our heroes, the rectifier as part of voltage regulation system comes into play, converting AC to DC. If you enjoy the content, please don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the notification bell, so you never miss any update. Let's first grasp the fundamentals of rectification. In general, there are two primary methods of rectification, half-wave rectification and full-wave rectification. Both methods share a common goal, to transform alternating current into a one-way flow of direct current. However, they differ in terms of output waveform stability and effectiveness. First, let us look into the half-wave rectifier circuit and how it works. It is considered as the simplest rectifier, making use of only a single diode to do the job. In operation, the half-wave rectifier acts like a switch. But unlike a typical switch that you manually turn on and off, the diode is controlled by electrical voltage. When connected to an AC supply, it permits only the positive half of the AC waveform to pass through during forward bias mode. Conversely, during the negative half cycle, the diode switches to reverse bias mode, effectively obstructing the current's flow. This creates interruptions in the electrical flow, resulting in missing portions within the waveform. For easier understanding, think of a diode as a one-way valve in a pipeline. When water flows in one direction, let's say from left to right, the valve opens up, permitting the water to pass through. However, when the water attempts to flow in the opposite direction, the valve stays tightly closed to prevent any reverse flow. Furthermore, the half-wave rectifier is commonly used together with a capacitor to smoothen the rectified DC output. This capacitor stores electrical energy and releases it when needed to fill in those missing portions. However, it's important to note that even with capacitors, the output from a half-wave rectifier still exhibits relatively higher ripples or fluctuations and may not be as smooth as what we'll discuss in our next section, the full-wave rectifier. In full-wave rectification, there are two commonly employed circuit configurations. The first method requires the use of two diodes, D1 and D2, together with a center tap transformer to achieve full-wave rectification. It's important to note that the secondary voltage from the center tap transformer is in the form of AC and is split in half to two equal voltages. During the positive half of the AC cycle, D1 in forward bias takes the lead, allowing the flow of electrical current while D2 in reverse bias acts as a barrier. In contrast, during the negative half of the cycle, where the current flows in the opposite direction, D2 becomes forward bias and D1 becomes reverse bias. As a result, D2 permits the current flow while D1 restricts it. Notably, the current flows in the same direction through the load during both the positive and negative cycles, creating a unidirectional output. Unlike half-wave rectification with missing portions, full-wave rectification results in a complete output waveform, but all in a consistent direction. Now, let's explore the second configuration for full-wave rectification known as the full-wave bridge design. This design is one of the most commonly used setups and comprises of four diodes, D1 to D4, arranged in a bridge formation. These diodes can be divided into two pairs, D1 and D3 forming one pair, while D2 and D4 forming the other. 
they work harmoniously together, when one pair conduct, the other pair remains in a non-conducting state. To better understand this, let's look at the operation step by step. During the positive half cycle, D1 and D3 are in forward bias, enabling current to flow, while D2 and D4 are in reverse bias, blocking the current. Conversely, during the negative half cycle, D2 and D4 conduct the current, while D1 and D3 prevent current from flowing through. These coordinated actions result in a unidirectional, full wave output at the load. Moreover, in full wave bridge design, the output voltage remains the same. Similar to half wave rectification, the output of a full wave rectifier is typically connected to a parallel smoothing capacitor to enhance the rectified output. Now, because of the smaller gaps in the rectified output, the DC voltage after adding a capacitor has a significantly reduced amount of ripple compared to half wave rectifier. With reduced voltage ripple, fluctuations are minimized, resulting in a more stable and consistent power supply. This characteristic makes the full wave rectifier an excellent choice for various electronic devices. As we discussed earlier in this video, most electronic devices operate on extra low DC voltage. Therefore, in practical applications of full wave rectifiers, additional components are often integrated to adjust the voltage according to specific needs. For instance, when dealing with standard AC voltages, like 110 or 230 VRMS, it is necessary to lower this voltage to a more usable DC voltage level, typically ranging from 1.5 up to 48 volts for most electronic devices. For example, some microcontrollers may require 3.3 or 5 volts, while laptop chargers might need 19.5 volts to function. To achieve this, one common method involves the use of a transformer, together with voltage regulator circuit to step down the high AC voltage to the desired lower level. Alternatively, transformerless solution can be achieved using a Zener diode, in combination with a series resistor, to regulate the voltage to a lower level, ensuring safety and compatibility with electronic devices. Up to this point, our discussion has mainly focused on single-phase rectifiers. However, Three-phase rectifiers play a crucial role in various applications, utilizing similar fundamental concepts to single-phase rectification, but with distinctions in their configuration and output. In single-phase rectification, there are instances of zero voltage during the cycle, resulting in noticeable gaps in the output. Three-phase rectifiers, on the other hand, harness the advantages of three overlapping phases to significantly reduce these gaps, leading to lower voltage ripple. Let's delve into how three-phase rectification works, it can also be classified into half-wave or full-wave rectification. In a three-phase half-wave rectifier, three diodes, labeled D1 to D3, are being employed. Each diode is connected to a single line and back to the neutral. The diode with the highest voltage across it at any given period conducts. For instance, D1 conducts when VA surpasses VB and VC. Next. D2 conducts, when VB is the highest. And lastly, D3 conducts, when VC takes the lead. The cycle repeats, and this coordinated operation results in a much lower voltage ripple, compared to single-phase rectifiers. Moving on to a three-phase full-wave rectifier, it utilizes six diodes, labeled D1 to D6, all connected to line-to-line -line voltages, VAB, VBC, VCA and their reverse combinations, VBA, VCB, and VAC, totaling six waveforms. Let's explore how a three-phase full-wave rectifier operates in this configuration. Initially, when VCB is the highest, D5 and D6 turn on. Subsequently, when VAB becomes the highest, D1 and D6 activate. This is followed by VAC, where D1 and D2 turn on, and then VBC, where D3 and D2 conduct. Then, VBA leads to D3 and D4 activation, and finally, VCA results in D5 and D4 conducting. This pattern repeats every cycle, and ensures that the output has the lowest voltage ripple compared to the other types of rectifiers we discussed earlier. With the advantage of lower ripple, three-phase rectifiers are preferred choice in many industrial applications that demand a high degree of power quality and consistency. 
For example, it is used in the data center, medical equipment, high-power battery charging system, electric railway system, marine application, and various others. That's it for today's video. I hope you have a clearer understanding of Rectifier. If you find this video helpful, please remember to like, subscribe, turn on the notification bells, and share it with others. Thank you.